G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map, playing in the color blue as the Chinese, it is Beastie Cutie. On the opposite side of the map, playing as the English, we have got Vortex who spawns in as the red. This map is uh, Altai, of course, Altai, the beautiful Altai map, and it looks to be quite a fair spawn. We've got three sacred sites here, so all of you Delhi doubters out there are going to be happy to see three sacred sites. I know I've, I've played a couple Altai games. In fact, I played if I remember correctly, two Altai games back to back. And but then, and both of them only had two sacred sites on them. I was really sad. <laughs> interesting opening here from Vortex, uh, putting the mill right next to his town center. Uh, interestingly, can't fit a farm in between these two. I don't know what the thinking is behind this. Obviously he's gonna go for an early wheelbarrow, but why not just put it one tile further away and then you can fit four farms in between your town center and your mill. What is the thinking behind this? Like, I, I honestly can't think of any good reason why that would be. Uh, he's got enough space for a farm there, but like, you, you are just literally missing out on four farms here. One farm here, one farm here, one, two, three, four farms there, and then four farms right there that are missed out on, so... Oh? 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 <laughs> what have we got here, ladies and gentlemen? Look at this. This is very interesting. So, it... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Vortex with the brain the size of a freaking watermelon. Holy shit. Okay, so you guys might be wondering what is happening here. He manages. So th the way that the um the mill works here. Oh my god, it's in. It is in. It's in. It's actually in. This is the new English tech right here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is exciting to see. Uh, it's a bit of a meme, I'm going to be honest, but it's actually so smart uh, by him. Um, and so he's just saving space. He's actually just keeping his village closer to the town center he, he, as i said you know you would have had a, a further tile out so the four <laughs> i can't even begin to explain how hilarious this is wait is it gonna work i, I don't even know how this is gonna work because he's gonna run out of, he's got like he's technically sitting in here I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen here this is curious i'm gonna have to work this one out but this is very interesting so th there's a square that is coming around the town center like that because he's it, it, it's two tiles deep uh, and technically it takes one tile right here of this farm uh, and and then that is going inside so i'm curious exactly what he's thinking here is but uh yeah very interesting sorry that i've spent so much time working on it but, or talking about it it's just very rare to see any kind of new uh new evolutions in the way that the game is played when it comes to this kind of thing you know we started off with eight farms sitting safely inside the mill and then it came 10 farms and now we've got this called kind of like diamond formation i guess you'd call it or like the arrow formation look at that it's kind of like an arrow it's pointing over in this direction but uh speaking of directions let's take a look back towards the base of his uh his uh, uh scout is coming in and uh we'll have a look at the base of his opponent now uh beastie cutie Definitely looking to gather up that gold in the early stages of the game. He's going to be bringing back enough to age up. He'll be dropping down his Barbican, or does he go for the Imperial Academy? Let's take a look and see what he does. It's going to be a Barbican that goes at the front. Uh, I'm assuming that there are some resources here. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, a couple of berries over here, as well as a, as well as a scouty sheep uh, that is yet to be gathered up at this point, but uh, just going to be tapping away with the single villager. I'm curious what kind of opening he looks for here. No wheelbarrow at this stage. Going to be going onto the gold vein, so could be thinking about a potential fast dynasty. We have seen fast dynasties out of players so i think about 5 30 5 40 is about the best timing you can get on that double dynasty uh opening uh but uh we'll have a look and see how he does it because beastie I, I'll be honest, he is a big fan of the Chinese. I, I watch Beastie Cutie streams a fair bit, and he I, I remember back in the day, he's like, China is busted, bro. I'm telling you, like they, they might seem weak, but they're actually very good. Once people work them out, they're going to be really good. And we see them coming out here on Altai. So it's great to see that Beastie is bringing them out in the second game on his home map. Now, obviously, for you guys who missed the first game, uh, that was a Vortex win. You'll be able to tell by the top of your screen up here uh, that Vortex has got a victory on the board. So that was a Mongol versus French game. The Mongols came out against the French. Unfortunately, Vortex just completely steamrolled over the top of Beastie Cutie. So, Beastie going to be looking to try and even the series up here. Uh, keep in mind, this is a best of five. So, whoever we is the first of three games is going to be winning this series. So, both players obviously very keen to stay in that winner's bracket and get a, an extra day of rest. 
Um, and uh, it, it's definitely going to help them out um, on, uh, on or I don't know if it's an extra day of rest, but they get an extra, uh, you know, an extra extra bit of rest. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the other big thing is obviously if you are playing in the winner's bracket, you don't really have to expose all of your strategies. Whereas if you drop down to the loser's bracket, so let's say if, if Vortex goes on to win this, uh, you know, or, or Beastie manages to, to come back, if you drop down onto into the loser's bracket, then you've got to go play against Marine Lord or Viper, the winner of that series. And then you're potentially revealing even more strategies. And it's like, well, do you want to be doing that? When, when you know, when we're talking about big money here, like this is a tournament, this is five, a 540 dynasty, by the way. So pretty nice timing here uh, coming through for Beastie Cutie. Uh, but when you're talking about a big tournament, like you want to be keeping your cards close to your chest. And I, I mean, if, if we've seen any cards close to a chest right now, it has got to be Vortex with this, this new technology that's come through the mill, the mill tech that is coming through right here not military technology though uh different mil tech but um now we've got the imperial academy coming up in a beautiful imperial academy this is as well hitting the mill hitting the uh the stable hitting the mining camp the double mining camp and we'll hit the berries as well uh so it doesn't actually hit any of the lumbic mills but that is okay um but uh, we'll see what he looks to do now because Vortex is beginning to funnel in more units. So we see three longbows already heading out towards the base of his enemy and just going to be dropping down an outpost behind enemy lines, behind enemy lines, behind enemy forests maybe is probably a bit more accurate. Dynasty has come through for Beastie Cutie. Uh, we'll see if he looks to empower the, uh, the stable. He is moving towards it. You can see that he's got uh, automatic tax collection turned on here. So he might just be heading over to grab some tax you can see the, the Imperial official has a mind of its own. And I say that uh, in, in a way that is not a good way. Uh, but it looks like he was just going to uh, be gathering up a whole bunch of wood here um, and going to be dropping down a village. So looking to get a whole bunch of housing population here, a very efficient form of housing as well, uh, only costing half of what a normal house would cost uh, per per population spot. But uh, Paling's already coming down here from Vortex. Very cute uh, from Vortex to be doing this. I, I love the way that players do this. Just, you know, one Paling here, one Paling there. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna stop the attack, Daddy. Don't worry. Uh, but now going to be able to jump inside that outpost. Begins to move forward and look for the next outpost. Both of these uh, wood lines next to each other is definitely going to cause a little bit of havoc uh, in the base here for Beastie. Beastie going to be under attack here. He now knows what is up. The scout does manage to spot out the, uh, the offense and now We've got the horsemen beginning to move out. No plus one range defense coming in. But obviously with the scouting, with realizing that that outpost is up, uh, I would expect that Beastie is probably... I, I genuinely don't know how he responds to this. So he's obviously in the dynasty at this point in time. I think one of the uh, uh, responses that can be appropriate is going into Chokunu. Uh, but even then, you've got to have a pretty good mass of them to be, you know, competitive. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious what angle he's going to be looking to go for. So it looks like he's just going to be picking up reinforcements for the moment. Uh, but we'll see how he looks to play it. It's going to be dropping... Uh, beastie cutie. You can't be doing this right now. This is absolute lunacy. Chinese players love to boom. Every single Chinese player that I know is a Chinese, is like a massive boomer. They love booming. They love going for a dynasty into second town center. I can't believe that he's doing this. He's literally getting tower rushed right now. What does he know that I don't know that he thinks that this is an appropriate uh, decision? And now going to be coming in a little bit of a counterattack. You can see the horsemen actually get greeted by longbows that are sitting in the base here. And a lot of you guys might be wondering, what the heck are longbows doing in the base here? Well, Vortex knew. I, my enemy has got cavalry out i can't send my reinforcements out if i do they will potentially get picked up halfway across the map and you can see that's exactly where the cavalry are looks like we've got the uh, the upgrade now coming through but at the same time we can't push in on that front line the longbowmen have got that plus one attack and also sitting there safely with their palings gonna be able to repel this attack and it continues to move in towards the wood line so now Beastie Cutie needs to start thinking about a secondary source of wood. He's begun to move up towards this Barbican. It's definitely going to keep him safe. He does actually have a bit of a forest here on the front line as well. So that's going to keep him happy, chummy. But uh, I've just realized Vortex has got three forests, which is a very high amount of forests. Normally for this map, you've got two. That is it. Uh, but uh, I mean, we've got one, two, and I guess you could even say a third one down here for Beastie. But now in the middle of the map, Beastie looking to pick up a couple of the reinforcements coming through for Vi Vortex. I was going to say Viper for Vortex. We've got too many Vs in this game. Viper, Vortex, and... I'm not going to say the... F I'm not going to say the third one. Uh, <laughs> what is the third one? Uh, I, I can't even think of the, the third one. Uh, but interestingly, only goes for four mils and then just looks to go heavily into other things. Like, still yet to invest too hard into any other forms of, uh, of units or technologies. Obviously has plus one. Does have siege engineering that's come through. Now going to be looking for melee defense up against these units. Villagers fall back. No villagers going down at this point in time. But village account starting to build for Beastie Cuties. Up eight villagers at this point in time. And now a lot of you guys might be wondering, okay, Drongo, what the heck were you talking 
talking about when you said like, what does Beastie know that you don't? Okay, th that is what I need to, that's what I, we need to work out because right now the, what Beastie is doing to me looks like suicide. That is genuinely what I see here. He has got a Barbican of the Sun and an Imperial Academy. That is going to be increasing his villager speed or villager production by 30% or, th or 33%. I think it works out to be 35%. Um, so it takes a villager being created every 20 seconds down to t 13 seconds. So when you see these two town centers here, it's not two town centers. This is actually three town centers that he has got. And you can see he's trying to get up to the castle age, but he's run out of food now in the, in the banged base. Um, so he's got the equivalent of three town centers pumping out full price villages nonstop. And his opponent is going for one base, tower push, massing up units, investing absolutely everything into units. Obviously, he's got a couple of farms here, uh, which is, you know, great for his economy. But at the end of the day, like, you've got double outposts that's going to be coming in. Triple outpost, I quadruple outpost, I apologize. The the tower rush, it keeps on rushing and it don't stop rushing and it don't stop rushing and it don't stop pushing. Because now we've got the battering ram beginning to come in. Longbows are going to be able to trade out very efficiently uh, with any villagers that look to siege this down. You can see he's going to be turning his attention towards the house. But we do see that uh, astronomical clock tower coming up. So Beastie Cutie manages to make a very, very sound effort at going to the third age. And a smart move, honestly, I'm impressed that he got up to the third age on 2TC Song Dynasty against an English player. That is absolutely ludicrous. But now you can see up towards the north, horsemen are uh, just sitting there, waiting, hovering. Uh, I suspect we'll have veteran horsemen coming through shortly. More units beginning to move out. And it's, it's just longbows at this point in time. So Vortex is really committing to long, bo long box only, long bows only strategy. Um, veteran horsemen needs to be coming through here. We'll take a look over at the perspective of Beastie and ride on board with him a bit because at, at this point, it's all about how Beastie responds to this. You can see he's got five military out. He's going to be going in for a nest of bees as well. I think this is a, such a smart decision. And when it comes to the way that this can be countered uh, by his opponent, I really don't know. I mean, uh, I, I I would assume that it just shuts it down completely. So maybe that's actually the play. Is Beastie going to be able to hold this? But I, I'm just thinking, like, you, you're just going to be able to split longbows and fire down. Like, I think it, they end up taking one damage a shot. But when you've got, like, 22 longbows doing damage... I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how it plays out. I'm curious to see. But I, I feel like it's not a good thing. I really feel like Beastie's going to be in trouble here. He does have eight ranged armor on this. Uh, so only going to be taking one damage from the Longbowman. Third third ram coming in now. Uh, it looks like... So what, what he needs to do here is he needs to pull villagers uh, with the textile upgrade, which he's getting. Um, he needs to pull villagers with the textile upgrade onto these longbows and then look to move the nest of bees into position. And you can see the way that he's baiting the nest of bees and at the same time sieging down the town center. So this is the main town center. This is the big boy. And if he tries to turn his attention onto these battering rams, then the battering rams are going to be taking barely any damage because of the, the way that they just receive damage is just... I mean, they are a defensive masterpiece. Look at that. It is beautiful. But um, now Beastie Cutie definitely going to be struggling a bit to try and defend here. Definitely going to be losing this town center. That is for sure. The question is whether he loses the rest of his base. And now more units going to be coming up here. Look at this. A forward base coming through for Vortex. Town center does go down and Vortex looks to actually take the base to Beastie Cutie. So just when you thought this was Beastie Cutie's base, no, it is actually Vortex's base that is coming through right now. And uh, now we head into the cinematic mode. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get myself absolutely ready to be witnessing this because I can smell glory. I can smell glory. And now we see those villagers coming through. They've got that textile upgrade. Second nest of bees has come out now. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to be aware that there are potential men at arms or potential um, spearmen coming out. Now nest of bees is going to be able to force back this position, but the outpost is going to be doing a great job. You can see the... the uh, look at the damage that comes out onto those units there. Huge damage. And now looking to actually push this back. Beast Security does hold on with the one villager. Uh, I think it, with the uh, the one town center going down, rather. Uh, but now it looks like the uh, the nest of bees is going to be able to fire upon all of those longbows. A fair bit of damage coming through right now. You can just see the absolute the absolute slaughter that is happening. A huge amount of units going to be going down there. And Beastie actually showing that nest of bees is not a terrible unit. Men at arms are indeed the way that uh, it looks like Vortex is going to be going here. We'll enter back into our uh, our normal mode here. And uh, you can see that, yeah, Vortex has, has done a, a pretty decent job of, of keeping his head above water at this stage with this push. But at the same time, Beastie's lost a town center. Beastie is on one TC at this point. You can see all the resources that he's stacked up here. Barely got any wood coming in at the moment. Has managed to get up to three nest of bees. So Beastie actually going for a nest of bee rush here. And the question is whether it's actually going to be successful. So the Chinese nest of bee rush. Look at the walls that have come up here for Beastie. He's, look at his, his wood source. This is what Beastie is resorting to when it comes to his wood. He needs to get some sort of market up 
up right now, but he can't. He has insufficient wood. And I, I don't even say that facetiously. Like, he genuinely has insufficient wood. You can see he was trying to get this second town center back up, but uh, or this main town center back up, but just struggling completely. Beastie Cutie has got the uh, network... Or the, the network. The network of bees. Uh, inside. <laughs> He's got the network of bees in his base quite happily. Uh, but at the same time, Vortex just looking to almost commit to a second age play here. You can see the farms have come down in mass here. Uh, he's managed to fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven farms around this. So instead of 10 farms around this, I don't know if this tech was worth it. I'm going to be honest with you, Vortex. It was, it was impressive, but at the same time... Um, yeah, it, 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 I mean, you could have just got 10 farms. I'll be I'll be real with you, bro. <laughs> but now it looks like he's going to continue adding in more farms. Not really intent on moving up to the next stage. He's gathering up a lot of stone behind this, though. Um, so if he did want to... And look at this forward farming coming out from him. Definitely a curious strat right next to the stealth forest as well. Going to be absolutely safe from any potential uh, wolves, I suspect. But um, Nesta Bees still struggling at the moment. He's got three of them. Palace Guard's going to be coming out in response. Um, honestly, you want to know what I want... Uh, you know, want to know what we need to see from here? Beastie Cutie just throwing up random little wall segments. You throw up a wall segment like across here, throw up a wall segment like back here. Why, why does that Why does that matter? Why is that important? It's important because it actually controls the way that the units move. If you can get units to stack up on top of each other when they try and come and siege your nest of bees, that gives you an opportunity not only to block, but also to kill them because the nest of bees, the way that it dishes damage, it's AoE. So... It, it, it is a, a, a really decent thing to do. Uh, and just put, like, random walls through, like this. Just put a random wall just here like that. That is... A, it's a very smart way to actually control that. But now a raid going to be coming down on the front. Villagers turning around and taking out that, uh, that, uh, that uh, horseman. Now Nest of Bees. You can see them moving up into position. A lot of men at arms coming out now. He's looking to unfold on them. You can see the way that they're coming out. I would have loved to have seen a wall down right here across this. But uh, all the men at arms are going to be looking to, to come in and attack the Nest of Bees. We enter into the cinematic mode because we are about to witness the game happening right here. Beastie is definitely going in for the kill. Or rather, ne uh, Vortex is going in for the kill. Beastie going to be holding his... He manages to hold it alive. You can see a trebuchet on the back line going to be coming out here looking to siege it down. The cavalry has come through. But at the same time, Nest of Bees going to be falling back. One Nest of Bees remains. I don't know whether he's got sufficient wood at this point in time. We're going to have to take a quick look to see whether he's got insufficient wood or not. It looks like he's got about 115 wood in the bank, so it's going to be enough. But at the same time, villagers exhausting it so quickly. Men at arms able to just completely destroy this position. Battering rams just doing so much work. Was the network, was the network, was the fast castle into Nest of Bees a viable strategy? It does not seem so because BC Cutie has now tapped out of the game. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two is won by Vortex as well. We move on to match number match number three. It is also match point. Make sure you stay around because we are heading straight into it after this one.